today we are working on a rear trailing arm. We're going to take off the flex lines because we got new brake lines from Gargistic. So, uh, 11, only 11 is the ticket. Yes, we can. And now we'll apply a bit of heat. Daddy, what are you, what are you doing? I'm warming this thing up so I can hopefully loosen it. Alrighty. That out for now. That's right. There's a metal locking ring. So in there, it's a metal locking ring. Here I started with a small screwdriver. Uh, in those grooves, you just want to try to bend them out as much as possible, and then you move into a bigger screwdriver. 36. There we go. Deep knot. So like one of these. Put a big old carriage bolt through the back. I think this is like a 3/8, something like that. Uh, one that'll fit through the hole of the stud. And it goes all the way to the back. And because it's a carriage bolt, it'll just sit there. And what that does is it holds And that's good. Teeth still look like they're in immaculate shape. Who would have thought BMW knew what they were talking about when they said, put the nut back on and bash it air. So we've got it out. We gotta deal with this ginormous circlet, but first I'm gonna take these off. That's 14. One, two, that is the, remember this is the piece that holds the um, emergency brake in. Okay, so now I want to take this dust cover off, and these look like, they look like tens to me. So when you're taking it off, notice. Uh, brake line. So navigate away from brake line and then off she comes. I've done a little bit of boo boo damage here, which I'll see if I can hammer it out with a ball peen. I shall be returning these belts back to their respective homes. Is that, is that what I want? No, I don't. I want Squeeze with all of my might and manliness. And there she is. Right. Yeah. Oh, there's that channel. That's where the circlet lives. So. Ninety to eighty. It is exactly eighty. Here, I'll show you. So this is. I mean, the nominal. It's like it's ninety eighty, but it fits like fits like a glove in there. But there's a lip here, metal lip. Yeah. So when you go to put it in, it only comes out this way. Only goes back in that way. So once you get that lined up from there, then you've got as much as much cross-section pushing on that as that bearing. Today's Jank Squad episode is sponsored by Clamps. Clamps, get a grip. They're good and they're nice and oh, that's it. Remove the race. Oh, that's good, remove the race.
That solve a lot of world's problems. Yes, this is definitely a different one. The other one just fell in. Negotiating. That's not in properly, people. I'm so prepared. God knows how long it takes me to get back to a project, so I normally just a little bit of this. Little dub D, little dub D for the for the road. This is like a 20 buck harmonic balancer that I filed out, in case you don't remember. So the nightmare continued. I had to use every pair of pliers that I had from the brake line, and eventually I just cut it, and I cut it, and I lost everything. Couldn't deal with it anymore, so there's an episode about making a new brake line. Look at that. Oh, finger loose. Oh yeah, look, see? See how easy that was? Oh, all you needed to do was cut the inside of the thing. Metal. This is also metal. In the middle. Alright, doesn't look like it, but it's metal. And then there's the one for the bolt. So there's three layers of metal. Now I've been told these never fail. And I concur. This would probably never fail. But I want urethane in there. So here we go. The next part uh, was trying to get these bushings out from the trailing arm. A K Mac gives you these, but they don't give you any instructions. It turns out uh, I think you need to like apply heat. I didn't apply heat, so it was about brute strength. I ended up trying the hydraulic press and I just could not get them to budge. And then I moved on. That's making a huge mess there. There. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna move whatever that is. Gotta keep things tidy. I know it's gonna be a mess. I just don't want more mess. I got kids already. Did you see that? Straight up broke my drill. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot, a lot of nerve. So the trailing arm saga continues. I need a longer one. I need a longer one. 38 millimeter hole saw. That's what I found. Fits into this thing. I should have been looking at the camera. <laughs> uh, where when I drilled the hole and I went through that shielding, through that metal thingy. You actually have to take a hacksaw, undo the blade, get in there, cut it out, and then take these sleeves out. Fun times. Fun times. Well, that's one way to do it. Now it's fun. Uh, with regards to orientation, I don't think there's any difference. This is a cautionary tale. So here I've put the cup on the reverse way thinking I'm getting a better surface, uh, but it turns out it's completely wrong and it ruins your bearing. So don't put it this way, put it with the ring side, yeah, with just on the diameter. See that? See that? See what happened there? It's came back time. I love this. I love this. We'll do a thing about that. So you've got the inner ones are smaller, the outer ones are larger, right? Because this is inside, everything's inside. So the thick lip would be on the inside, like that, for the inner, which is this smaller one. The outer, the thick lip, goes to the outside, like that. The thick lip goes to the inside. Alright, 
and then I say juice this up. Okay, I was saying using multi grips, but I think this is okay. These outer ones, the thick ones, go to the out. got a good old-fashioned cleaning and degreasing took everything uh, through a wire wheel and cleaned taped and I painted it and I just used uh, a standard uh, single stage enamel paint that I could brush on um, just easy to apply and let them dry for a few days and then they were ready for reinstallation here I'm just talking about using a bungee cord um, and attaching it to the top of the strut area support. And what this does is it allows you to suspend the trailing arm, support it from the stud, one of the stud holes, and it kind of keeps it in the in the in the right positioning uh, that it would live in generally. But it allows you to negotiate the back end without having to wrestle with it too much doesn't have as much tolerance issues. But this side, over here, this side is catching. I'll, I'll wind down this giant adjustable to about the thickness of the metal tabs. And I'll go as deep as I can so I don't... And just do some tweaks, basically. To say, you know what, I can give myself a little bit of not much on this side but you can do a little bit at the top but because it's welded it's reinforced here that's the other thing that's unique about m5 subframes from the factory they're just welded up like that uh, so you know when you see kits when you see like reinforcement kits from <coughs> other companies like Gargistic and um, Ireland engineering and uh, what's the other one um, Condor, they're basically just giving you parts that they've fabricated that are, you know, what they would have used from the OEM, are very similar. I mean, the materials obviously would be a bit more refined after 30-something years. Yeah, on the inside we've made the, the flat bit go up top. Oh my god. That is outrageous. <laughs> Put in the bolt from here. I'm gonna line it up, get the bolt in, and then that will help me kind of get this so I can jimmy it in or bash it in or do whatever. I started by using a long screwdriver to create a little bit of leverage so I could make sure that I've got clearance all the way through to one side. I've started with the bolt on one side of it to anchor it, that way I can work on the other side and if I need to do some hammering or a bit of pushing and pulling, I'm not going to be having, and the other side is secure so it's not going to fall on my face. I'm not going to put the bolt all the way in though, that way when I start working on the other side I still have a bit of torsional maneuverability. You can see on either side, um, I, you also have to wedge in these of these brass or not they're not brass but these rings on either side of the bushing um, and that's what creates the friction to keep it stationary you can see them falling out every two seconds so you have to wrestle those and hammer and kind of try to leverage things in um, into position and hopefully you've you know bent the tabs enough to where it's not gonna be an absolute nightmare but it'll be difficult after getting it lined up, you can put in the second bolt. Now the first bolt is still only halfway in, um, but
but you'll be able to sort that out afterwards. I've put a little bit of grease on the neck of the bolt just because of more corrosion resistance over time. And as you can see, the bungee cord is helping out by you know keeping the other end suspended, which is actually the heavier part of the trailing arm, which lets you be able to wiggle things around and position them correctly. Here what I'm doing is I'm using the bolt to um, help align it to the other hole. Uh, it's also gonna help cinch in those rings that are on either side of the bushing. And what I do, it's a mixture of, you know, twisting the bolt, which actually changes the alignment in the back. That was the whole purpose behind getting these particular bushings is that I'm putting slightly lower springs on the back and I wanna be able to make sure that my toe and my caster are both correct. Um, I'm not tracking the car, but I, I want it to drive true, even though the suspension height has been changed a little bit. And so that's here, I'm just trying to negotiate that. The space between here and here doesn't allow for the this toothed washer, the tab washer, and for this giant nut to fit in. So as a compromise, because I don't know what's going on, is that I'm gonna put the lock one and the nut. Because it's not enough room. And I just nudge it back a tiny bit. We're working with millimeters here, so I'm very pleased. The threads are not. Threads are in good nick. Oh, man. Just been over the moon if this was. So, here, what you can do is see the actual movement of the bushing. Um, I'm trying to get it so that the ring in the middle gets seated um, because it's not meant to move that much during the adjustment process uh, for alignments. And from there, I'm just tightening it down as much as I possibly can to reshape the tabs uh, since we bent them out from the beginning and hopefully what that'll do is correct any kind of like wobble. And then we move over to the other side. Um, there's a little bit more room on this side because of the differential. So similar process, you just kind of get the nut in. I'm doing the same process where I'm tightening everything down so that I can kind of get those tabs back into shape. And afterwards, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of shifting. You can see the range of motion. So the bolt doesn't move, uh, but the bushing does move inside of those rings, those captive rings that are toothed. And the next natural thing is to put in those flex lines uh, that go into the trailing arm, the one that we absolutely destroyed to get out. These are garagistic. Yep, our old friends. Uh, runs from the top and then comes in. There's a circle um, that helps secure the other end. Uh, that is the original brake line. I've just uh, re electroplated the little securing tab that's in the back. And you want to seat the flex line from the back first and I've left the hard line unclipped just so I can get the alignment on the threads right and make sure that everything's lining up otherwise I don't want to sit there and accidentally you know, ruin the threads. One last bend here uh, marked because that'll go it'll go 45 degrees and it'll go straight into the back of the soft line that goes for the because I'm gesturing but off screen so there's a caliper here anyway so that'll be bent like that this is a 14 mil and an 11 is what you're gonna need so fine with these you don't have to go bonkers with them just get them tight and then that's it once it stops budging then you're pretty much done I broke down and I bought a specialized tool um, it's for an E34, um, but they're the same exact thing. So it has an extraction uh, set and an installation set. 
and they uh, it was on like big sale. So if you find it on like seventy percent off, just buy it, and you know you got friends. Anyways, so the hub will go into the bearing, and then this little spline gets threaded on to the end of the outer hub. Yeah, and after that, uh, we'll do the installation process. Now what you're doing, now what I'm doing is I've got uh, a brake line that I ended up cutting off earlier. Um, I created a new one. Well, I didn't create one, I just bent up a new one. So I'm putting in the final bend here uh, before I install the dust plate. So I'll have a full episode about how I did that, how I put in the, you know, the flare for it, what kind of flares that you use um, for all of these German cars. I think they're called a double bubble, which is hilarious. So this is just, you know, checking the alignment, seeing that when I go to put in the flex line, it'll at least be in the vicinity. These are the two M6 or the 10 millimeter head bolts and then the 14 millimeter head bolts uh, for the e-brake and for the dust plate and I've just torqued them on to probably like 25 yeah, foot pounds and now I'm going to put the spline in all you do is just line it up friction will hold it most of it in the bearing and then after that uh, we're gonna install the spline on the back end and then this is the sleeve that goes over it and it'll sit all the way on the back of the bearing and then that's a thrust bearing so that's what's going to turn uh, when you turn the nut and it'll keep the shaft that's pushing onto the bearing from spinning so it'll do the spinning um, instead of the actual the longer sleeve and then I've just put a brace on to the hub uh, so I can hold it. This is a 32 millimeter uh, spanner and you just wind it and slowly but surely. And once it seats, it'll stop moving. You won't be able to take it off. And that's, you take everything off. I'm going in great detail about this one. So then after that, uh, I just put a little bit of the oil on the splines for the rear hub assembly. Um, take your time to line it up. Uh, it'll find, you know, it'll find its home with some splines. And then once it does, again, the friction is gonna hold it on. And then you just get a dead blow hammer or a mallet. Um, this is per manual instructions. And you just slowly work it uh, on separate sides. And um, and all you need to do is push it in to the point where there are threads exposed from the front hub, because once you have, you know you can access those, that's where you can return the spline tool back onto it. So even if it's maybe you know four, five threads uh, is enough and then you're essentially doing the same process. So the long sleeve goes on there. Uh, it's gonna be pushing on the back of the rear hub piece, the thrust bearing, put the nut back on. You still got the brace ready to go. And this process takes a lot less because it doesn't need to travel as far. Again, once it seats, it will stop moving. It won't go anymore. So don't push it. Otherwise you could damage the bearing. Uh, you could misalign something. So uh, I'm going to use my impact driver um, with extreme prejudice, just put a little bit of Loctite on it as per use well, because um, the impact driver goes up to 290 and these, all of these ones which are called like clouded white or cloud white because they're not the yellow chrome white ones, all of these call for. 240 to 260 newton meters. So really what I do is I just watch the the writing on the side of the, um, the socket. Once it stops, 
then I let up and that's it. I don't wind it up any more than that. And then I will be putting the lock. I will be putting the lock on. Alright, I've got a little what do you call it? A little bracer bar thingy. So then you just kinda then you get it lined up with the little grooves. And a fairly large size mallet. Until that inner radius, yeah, makes contact with the nut. Now you can see a bit better. Almost the whole thing around this side is kind of giving me a little trouble. That's it. Installed. It's all the way down to the base, and it's in the lock, and they're in the grooves. You just slowly work it around like you're dealing with a bearing. And then, uh, that's it. That's ready for marriage now. More marriage. Yes.